Hello, this video to show an example of normalization as things get more complicated. In particular, in this document, the header of the data contains a compound key. I'll explain better. The data still divides between a header and underneath a series of lines that are repeated. But the header is about some screen of a cinema. You need to know both of these pieces of information to know things like the maximum number of seats. The screen next door might not have the same number of seats as this one. And also accessibility. I imagine all cinema screens are accessible now, but some old cinema might still have some screens inaccessible. Right. Then underneath there is a series of columns showing information but for one screen of one cinema there are multiple films showing there are two there could be many more right we've got an idea of the data let's place this into a normalization grid there it is room for the, the unnormalized form and also the first second third normal form and there's our data still to be able to work things out so there's cinema number and screen number which are my potential header key and then there is the name of the cinema, but also where it is. One, two attributes here. The number of seats and the screen type. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six for the header. One, two, three, four, five for the repeating group. We could have separated date and time. We didn't. The repeating group is here in red, but often people put a line across it to indicate that it is repeating, so here I'll follow tradition. Let's do the first normal form. In 1 and F, we have to separate the header from the repeating group. So there's the header and the repeating group apart from it. But when I do this, now I know that the film is showing at a certain date and time, but I've lost the information about where it is, and I've also lost the link between the top and the bottom part of this data. That doesn't sound right. That's because when we separate the header and the lines, we actually need to repeat the primary key of the header. There it is, a repeat of the primary key of the header. It's a reference back to this data because it's a compound key here. Those two refer back to those two. So what I've got is a compound foreign key that with a line across there to use a bit like we'd use a bracket there's our first normal form. We have two structures and each of them have got their key and we know that the repeating data has been set in its own table. We need to sort out the second normal form. Second normal form problems occur when there are compound keys. Often with this kind of work, the problem is partly resolved by having some structures that don't have a compound key. But here, there's a compound key at the top and there's a compound key at the bottom, so we have a bit more work. Let's see. This structure here, its compound key is cinema number plus screen number, but the compound key isn't needed all the time. There are information like the name. It's the name of the cinema, not the name of this screen within the cinema. Well, there might be some fancy cinemas that do things like um, name each screen according to some famous actor or something but uh, let's say that this one isn't and anyway the location it's the location of the cinema like Bristol there isn't a fancy cinema where you have a different screen and a different city each time so the cinema number is enough to determine the name and the location of that cinema right then we've got the screen number the screen number is needed as well as the cinema number for the number of seats in that screen and the type of screen, accessible or not. So that should separate into two structures. There they are. There's the cinema number with its name and location. And then there's cinema plus screen with the attributes determined by that. That is the maximum number of seats and the screen type. The cinema number and cinema number are repeated here. It's the primary key in this one. So it's going to be the foreign key in the other one. It's the foreign key here. What about the bottom structure? The film ID, it's the film that is showing in that screen of that cinema at this date and time. If it was a different date and time, or a different screen, or a different cinema, it wouldn't be the same film. So that depends on all three. What about the film name? Well, you might want to tell me it depends on the film ID, but we will do this later 
in 3NF. It, the choice is, does it depend on all three of these attributes or on only some of them? If that's our choice, the film name would be different if it was a different cinema number, screen number, and date and time. So, it depends on all three. Duration depends on all three. Number of bookings, of course, depends on all three. If it was a different showing, it wouldn't be the same number of people going, presumably. So, this compound key here does not break up. We keep everything the same. There. There's a, an interesting pattern coming up. Each cinema has got several screens, and in each screen there are several films showing at the different dates and times. So there's a one-to-many relationship and then a one-to-many relationship bit from that table to that one to that one. Finally, the third normal form. The third normal form is there to highlight problems with attributes that occur more often in larger tables. And it is to look whether there are certain attributes that are not the key, but that could have been. Name and location of the cinema they both depend on cinema number. Number of seats and screen type, oh, they depend on both of these. We've discussed this for long enough, so that does not change. Finally this, it's a largest table, there are quite a few non-key attributes, and we did say that there was something special about film ID. So, if you know the cinema, the screen and date and time, that tells you which film is showing and how many bookings there are for the film. But the name of the film and the duration, they are information about the film. It doesn't change when we change cinema. So, we have a nice non-key dependency here. That is an attribute that is not currently the key, but really ought to be the key of its own table. So we need to break this table in two. Cinema number, screen number and date and time. The primary key with two attributes that depend on it and separately from that. Film ID being the primary key of two attributes that depend on it. There, one, two, three, four separate structures. Future tables, but we haven't named it yet. And a solution for our normalization. One last check before drawing the entity relationship diagram. A trick to use here is to count the number of attributes because there are as many attributes at the end as there were at the beginning. Okay, that probably sounds a little bit doubtful, but let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And here on this side, there are more attributes it seems, but some of them are repeats. One. Two, three. We've already counted cinema number because it's a cross reference to this cinema number there. So don't count this one. Four, five, six. Don't count this. It's a cross reference to the other two over there. Seven, eight, nine. Don't count this. We've counted it already. Ten, eleven. We have the same number of attributes at the end as we have at the beginning. In fact, we've got exactly the same attributes in the end as we have at the beginning. We can check each of them and find that each one of these is one of these. What about the ERD? Here, let's draw that. So here's our data again and we draw the tables. So there's the cinema number which is the primary key of a cinema table. I'm not writing down the names of the attributes other than primary key and foreign keys because that takes space. And there's this table here which is the screens. There's our screen primary key in foreign uh, primary key here and foreign key cinema number which refers back to there so those two are connected via the foreign key which way does this go do you think uh, let me think the crow's feet grab the asterisk yes so each cinema has many screens and each screen is in one cinema the cinema number is the foreign key the foreign key is also where the many is it works as we've seen before the next structure records which film is showing on that particular cinema screen. We could call that performance. Each performance, you know, is that performance, occurs on one specific screen and each screen has got many performances on it. Then finally, the film is a foreign key leading to the last table that is recording film information. Each performance is a performance of one film and each film could be shown in many performances. So there's our overall 
entity relationship diagram. In the end, the compound key turned into this screen information because both the cinema and screen information were in the header of the table. And what's come up is a hierarchy. Each cinema has many screens, each screen has many performances on it. Much of that depends on how your information is presented on the form. Oh yes, and as part of hierarchies, there's often compound foreign keys like this one where two attributes refer to the two attributes forming the primary key of screen. That's it. Overall, when the normalization starts with the compound key, it often leads to a hierarchical structure and using compound foreign keys. I hope you find this helpful. See you soon.